Toys R Us, a store almost all of us know and the majority of us still miss. Having gotten its start in 1948 as a baby furniture store, the year 1957 saw the first Toys R Us open its doors, and after 50 long years of dominating the toy market, in 2018, those same doors came to a close. It's almost a guarantee that you've been to, or at the very least have heard of Toys R Us. Many of us who collect toys are still feeling the ripple effect of its closing on the 29th of June, 2018 in the United States. While there's been an effort to revive the store by means of adding them to the inside of various Macy's department stores throughout the U.S., its presence, or lack thereof, has definitely been felt. And I would wager that to a person, everyone watching this has a memory regarding Toys R Us, for better or worse, whether it was finally finding that one toy you've been searching for, or Jeffrey the Giraffe in the commercials, or that one kid in class who knows someone whose cousin goes to another school two states over who knows someone who definitely won that shopping spray that we all wished we'd won. I'm still to this day convinced that no one knows anyone that's won that. And here in this video, some of us at Iconicon would like to share our memories with you. Whether it's our fondest memory of Toys R Us, or that last purchase we made in the remaining final days. So, step back in time with us to a comparatively simpler time and a happier era. Sit back and enjoy. There wasn't a Toys R Us in my area until the early part of the 1990s. But among my favorite memories are collecting Power Rangers during that time. Because in 1994, I had most of the set of the core Rangers. I had four out of the six, and I was missing the yellow and the pink ranger, but my mom managed to get them for Christmas that year in Christmas of 1994. And along with that time, my aunt went into the same Toys R Us, admittedly, and um, she bought the Red Dragon Thunder Zord. So I had Zords to play with in 1994 Christmas, as well as some rangers. And that was a really great, really fond memory. And I would continue to go to that same Toys R Us over the years to continue buying Power Ranger figures, Mega Zords, etc. And a secondary great memory for me, other than that one, was in 1996, seeing the return of Transformers on store shelves in that particular Toys R Us location in the form of Beast Wars and getting into that particular line in the first year. Now, I do live in Canada, so admittedly, Toys R Us is still around up here. So that's why I didn't comment on my last purchase more so than just commenting on the fondness of my memories. But among the more, how can I put it, precious memories right now is watching my son right now go look for toys or cards or whatever in that same Toys R Us which is still in that same location as it was when I was a kid. So that's quite a heartwarming thing for me. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that as part of this year's Iconicon. Thanks again. Good evening maggots. Zazel here from Sergeant Slaughter's Slaughterhouse. Now, I want to say thank you for giving us an opportunity to talk about Toys R Us because in actual fact, my experience with Toys R Us is one of my favorite toy collecting memories. So as a young child growing up in uh, Outback Northern Territory, we didn't have a lot of toy stores available to us. Most of the times those stores that did have toys were also, you know, possibly news agencies or supermarkets. You know, there wasn't really a lot of dedicated toy stores out there. So by the time I saw a Toys R Us, I was actually well into my teens. We moved out of the Red Center and into the big city, and it was actually in the city of Perth. There used to be a Toys R Us right in the city center. And when I heard that it was there, I, I had to go and have a look. And let me tell you, I may have been well into my teens, but walking through those Toys R Us doors, I felt like a kid again. I felt like a kid in a toy store. There were toys just plastered all over the walls. It was right into the height of Star Wars coming back. Uh, so there was, you know, walls and walls of Star Wars stuff. Uh, yeah, it was just a great feeling. One of those, one of those feelings you don't often get to replicate. And there's actually a saying um, that I've looked at recently, which reminds me of this as well, is that you don't often know you don't often appreciate a moment until it becomes a memory. And I feel like in this instance, I appreciated that moment. It is a great memory. And I want to thank you again for letting me talk about it today. All right. I'm dismissed. Morning, Sal. You said you wanted some Toys R Us memories. Well, here's a few. By the way, before we start, thanks for everything, Duder. I really appreciate all the help you've uh, given us over at the channel. 
and uh, congratulations on all the success of yours. Now, let's talk about some Toys R Us, shall we? <clears throat> a video like this is incredibly difficult to make for two reasons. One, because I miss Toys R Us, and two, I spent so much time at that store, I can't really remember a specific time. Wait, it's me, yeah, I can. I'll just keep it through a limited few. Now, I guess I should start at the beginning because I had the opportunity to go to the opening day of my local Toys R Us. Back when I lived in Cincinnati, my local Toys R Us was the Western Hills Toys R Us, and I went there a lot. I remember the commercials on TV, the buildup was exciting. They said they were going to have events and guests and celebrities and Barbie was going to be there, and I didn't care about Barbie, but my mom did, so that was a reason to get us to the store. But I wanted to go there to look for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers toys because this was 1993, late 93 when this store opened up. And I remember going there being so excited thinking, look, we couldn't find Power Rangers at any other store, but this store is brand new. They're going to have them. And they did not. By the time we got there, all they had left were the space villains and the battle bikes. But my mom being my mom got me the battle bike. So I walked out of that day with the first Power Rangers toys I would ever acquire, the three battle bikes. So I had a Blue Ranger, a Red Ranger, and a Black Ranger. A little, you know, four-inch figure, but no pink or yellow, no Zords, no anything like that. But that's okay. That day was so great, I still remember it almost 30 years later. Another great Toys R Us memory I have involves my grandma. So I come from a family of people who, if they make a promise, well, they keep that promise. And so on my 10th birthday, my grandma promised to take me to Toys R Us to get the brand new ship hazard doll yeah this is small soldier so we're in october of 1998 now and i'll never forget it was like 7 45 at night and my grandma you know being in her 70s at this point had just come back from an old people's seminar or whatever you call it but we went to toys r us and we almost didn't get in but the lady recognized me and she let us in and i got my chip hazard doll I, one of my first paychecks was to go back to that same toys r us and pick up a wwe hell in a cell uh, play set. It included a ring, a Hell in a Cell, The Undertaker, and my then personal favorite wrestler, Randy Orton. And realistically, I never stopped going to Toys R Us. I was never embarrassed or shy about going to Toys R Us. Hell, uh, for my 18th birthday, where did I go? I went to Toys R Us. I got an Xbox 360. I got a bunch of games. And I'll never forget around that age, I ran into one of my high school teachers and he was like, oh, what are you doing in here? Buying video games? And I just told him, yeah, but I was looking at toys. It was I was a senior, so I was probably looking at wrestling figures. Star Wars was back in the uh, rotation for me. I wasn't really collecting Marvel at the time, but Spider-Man 3 was new, and I already picked up those figures. Here's the part people probably want to hear about in relation to the YouTube channel. So, I was out at the Eastgate Toys R Us in Cincinnati, Ohio, one fair day in 2017, and I saw a dusty Millennium Falcon. And this was from The Force Awakens, which wasn't that old, but... Clearly that toy hadn't moved in a while. And then I saw all the figures and I noticed all the repeats and I pulled out my phone and I started filming and Toys R Us changed my life. So I've had all these great memories of buying toys, pricing toys. When I was six years old, I was at Toys R Us. I was like, can I use your phone to call another store to price match my Millennium Falcon? I was that kid. But none of those things really add up to the end of Toys R Us for me. Retail had changed. The internet changed the way of life. And some people saw Toys R Us was on its way out. And sadly, we got the confirmation. And so when that was the case, I started filming. And that happened to coincide with the Star Wars videos. You know, the death of Toys R Us, the rise of these Star Wars glut videos, they cross paths. Those Venn diagrams are almost one big circle. Am I blaming Star Wars toys for killing Toys R Us? No, I'm blaming Mitt Romney. But Star Wars toys didn't help. And at the end, it was kind of sad to see Toys R Us and its dying legs and what's there mountains and mountains of Disney Star Wars sequel toys and Rogue One by proxy. The Rogue One toys, I'll never forget, I counted 50 Jyn Ursos at one time at a Toys R Us. I counted 30 Rays, 20 of these, 50 Rose Ticos. That was at a Kroger, but we'll keep this around Toys R Us. For as much as I love all of Toys R Us, my Toys R Us experience, my story really does bookend with the one in Western Hills in Cincinnati, Ohio, because while I was there for the very first day as a child, I had so much fun looking for Power Rangers, wasn't even ultimately disappointed because I went home with something great. You know, always went home with something great from that store. But I also was there on the very last day. And even now, to talk about it four years later makes me sad because I spent so much time in that store. I grew up in that store. I went from 
being a kid spending other people's gift money to an adult making my own money, and then hell, making money from Toys R Us itself. And it was a it was an experience to say the least. I miss Toys R Us. I wish it would come back. I really do. It's one of those situations where I could recapture the fun. It's like it just went away for a little bit. If it comes back, I'm on board. I enjoy going to Target and Walmart and looking at toys, but there was nothing as great as a store dedicated to toys because from one end to the other, it was something for me. And the kind of guy I am when I grew up, maybe the one end really wasn't for me, but the other side of the store was. I still went to Toys R Us to pick up my video games, my action figures. Where I lived, they weren't overpriced and crazy. It wasn't that they were double and triple these other prices. Hell, if Walmart was selling you a toy for $9.98, my Toys R Us was selling it for $9.99. That's the price differential that I grew up with Toys R Us, and that's why Toys R Us was always a part of my childhood. It was the best toys at whatever the standard prices were, and they had everything. You walked in, you could get a game, you could get a movie, you could get anything at Toys R Us if you were a kid, and it was awesome. So I hope that the future generation gets that. I love the internet, I love the speed and the accessibility, the access to things around the world, but there's nothing more exciting than walking into your local Toys R Us and finding exactly what you're looking for. If you're 5, if you're 25, if you're 55, that excitement, it's still there. I want the next generation to get that, and I hope anyone that's listened to that took a minute and thought about some of their best Toys R Us experiences because, God damn it, it was the best place of all time. As a kid growing up in the 80s, and the early 90s, trips to Toys R Us were very few and far between for me. But the few times that we did go, it was an experience. Walking in that entrance, that first look around was just pure joy. It wasn't like walking down the toy aisle at Kmart or Target, whatever department stores we went to when I was a kid. I was surrounded by the stuff that I loved. And we didn't have a lot of money, so there wasn't a lot of opportunities to buy brand new toys like that. And even less opportunities to go to Toys R Us. Uh, the few times I did, though, it was awesome. I remember being a little overwhelmed, not sure what aisle do I go to. You know, I remember walking in, there was like the big Play-Doh section. I love Play-Doh. There was the Lego aisle. For me, I think I always went for that action figure aisle. The superpowers, later on the Toy Biz Batman, Kenner the Dark Knight collection. I remember going when Kenner the Dark Knight collection was new and my mom bought me that gold Batman and the Bat Cycle. It was recycled from like the RoboCop line, I believe. So as special as those memories of going as a kid are for me, my favorite memories are of going as an adult and taking my own kid. It was almost like a monthly tradition for us. We'd go at least once a month. Uh, we wouldn't always buy something, at least I wouldn't, <laughs> because as a modern collector, um, we remember what the toy shelves looked like. I remember you know, waiting outside in line for a, a Force Friday uh, midnight opening at Toys R Us, meeting fellow Star Wars collectors, and that was great. Although going inside, there was, they didn't have much. It wasn't like the old days in the 90s, you know, that first Force Friday before episode one where everything was just stacked. But taking my kid and letting him experience that, and the shelves were always full for, you know, with, with the toys that he wanted. The toys that he wanted were always well stocked on the shelves. I remember he always would go for the Ben 10 section. He loved Ben 10 action figures, Lego Dimensions, Lego sets. Hero Mashers. He liked the Hero Mashers line. He would buy those. One of my best memories of taking him was I had picked him up from my parents' house. They were babysitting him. And he came out in a full-on Iron Man costume. <laughs> my parents had uh, gotten him an Iron Man costume somewhere, and he insisted on wearing it. So we leave their house, and he asked, Dad, can we can we go to Toys R Us? I I want to I want to go to Toys R Us. Nana and Papa gave me money. And I'm like, what? They gave you money too? You got an Iron Man costume and money? I think they had given him like 40 or $50, which at the time he was like seven years old. Why weren't they doing that when I was that age? <laughs> but I said, sure. I took him to Toys R Us and he had that Iron Man suit on. And he walked in and he grabbed one of those blue baskets and he went shopping. Uh, he picked out a, I don't remember a few things, but. That was funny. Everyone in the store were look, you know, looking at him and and smiling, and it was it was adorable. Towards the end, the shelves at our Toys R Us really started getting bare, and I remember 
it would almost upset him when we went. He wanted to get the BB-8 fold-out playset. It was a playset that was looked like BB-8. You opened it up, and it was like the inside of a Star Destroyer from Star Wars. He really wanted that. I think it retailed for around 200 maybe 250 It was way overpriced. On our last trip, though, it was $30. They had two left. And so I got him. And uh, I got a Toys R Us shopping basket. Not the cart, just the hand basket. I got a bunch of those. They were selling those things for $2. And that was cool. I still have one left. I'll, I'll keep that one forever as just a memory of the original Toys R Us. But I do, I do miss that experience, you know, with my son. There's nothing that compared to it. Going into a store specifically full of toys, going down the Target toy aisle, Walmart, it's not the same. Maybe someday we'll get that back, hopefully, before it's too late, before my kids all grown up. We'll see. I grew up in a relatively small town on the south coast of England. So most of the toys that I got for birthdays and Christmases came from stores like Woolworths, or the small family-owned toy shop in my town that was called Gamleys. But for the children in my town who grew up in the 1980s, we would hear these incredible stories about Toys R Us stores. Stories that would come from children who had traveled overseas, perhaps to the United States or elsewhere, or were even lucky enough, you know, there were some Toys R Us stores in the United Kingdom. And the kids, I was always jealous of the kids who actually got to go there. But for me, I wouldn't get to go to a Toys R Us store until I was 10 years old in 1987. I was visiting some family in Cardiff, Wales, and I can remember just driving into the car park of this store and, and being absolutely overwhelmed with excitement. This was a gigantic Toys R Us store, a shop that I had dreamed of visiting for years. And I remember going into this store and seeing for the very first time action figures based on the Schwarzenegger Commando movie. And I know that I stopped and showed some kind of interest in these. I wanted to learn what they were all about. I'd never seen them before. I didn't hang around long. I went straight past those because there was a wall of Coleco Rambo toys. And that's what I was really into in 1987. That and Action Force International Heroes. And that memory is etched into my brain because my parents allowed me to pick up Mad Dog and Nomad, the action figures from the enemy team known as Savage. And you can't quite see it in this photo here, but I am actually in the back of this car with my cousins who are all staring at the camera. Everyone's staring at the camera except for me. Up in that top left corner there, I'm more interested in studying the card backs of these awesome Rambo action figures. And what I didn't realize at the time was that Mad Dog and Nomad weren't the only toys I got from Toys R Us Cardiff that day because my parents had actually picked up for me some additional figures and the Savage Strike Cycle. And you can see this photo here of me opening the Savage Strike Cycle on Christmas morning and a beautiful photo here of me with a carded Sergeant Havoc figure. And for me, it's just one of those memories that will stay with me forever. My first ever experience of going into a Toys R Us. I miss that place, because I'm a Toys R Us kid. Toys R Us was always a very special trip for us, especially in the early 1980s. My younger brother and I lived in suburban Nashville, and for quite a while there wasn't a Toys R Us near us. We would have to drive out past the Opryland theme park, and my parents weren't going to do that very often. I'll never forget the first time I went into a Toys R Us, I walked out with the Legend of the Lone Ranger, Lone Ranger, and Silver 2-pack, and it's still right here with me, this exact one. Toys R Us was almost like a myth back then. It was something you saw in commercials, but you never really got to make trips there. And that also kept them from going there unless they knew Toys R Us was the only place they were going to find that item. My second trip to Toys R Us involved picking up the uh, Bespin Control Room Micro Collection playset. And before I was even home with it, I found out that the windows inside had broken. They were, I didn't break them, they were broken in the box when I was in the back seat of the car. And my mom said, we're not driving back, you're just gonna have to live with it. So my Bespin Control Room never had the, the windows. It was just a big hole that Luke kept getting launched through. That's why you have two sets of 
Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow here on this table. The V2 Snake Eyes with the original Storm Shadow, both my childhood originals, and then my V3 Snake Eyes with my V2 Storm Shadow. These were figures that consistently my mother could not find unless we went to Toys R Us because they stocked enough volume that you could pick through and find, find it most of the time. And so these are actually the ones from Toys R Us. Uh, Shockwave from G.I. Joe, late in the game, I really wanted him. The Bespin Freeze Chamber micro playset was several years before Shockwave, obviously. We went into a Toys R Us one day to look around and all the micro collection playsets were on deep discount. I had the control room, I saw this big freeze chamber playset, and it was like discounted down to nothing. And my mom's, there was like a whole wall of them. And my mom said, yeah, you can pick one of those up. And so I grabbed that. The most poignant uh, Toys R Us memories I have though, uh, one is this B-Wing right here. My mother had me out of school uh, because I had severe um, allergies. They weren't life-threatening, but they were sort of crippling allergies, sneezing, puffy face, everything like that. And she knew she was about to take me in for some rigorous allergy testing, which involved like, I don't know if it was like 15 or 30 shots up each arm. And um, so there I was out of school one day and the appointment wasn't until the early afternoon. So my mom said, let's go to Toys R Us. And I said, oh, wow, okay. So we go to Toys R Us and this was 1985. I know that for a fact because the Ewoks and Droids toys were there brand new on the, on the store shelves of which I had little interest in because I liked the movie real life looking stuff. And all of the Return of the Jedi stuff was on deep discount. It was all red tagged. And uh, my mom said, oh wow. She said, well, you can get a ride. That's how she, uh, that's how she uh, referred to vehicles. She didn't call them vehicles, she called them rides. And I picked up this B-Wing fighter because I had the pilot at home. And then I ended up carrying this B-Wing fighter in my arms to the uh, allergy doctor. And there I was clinging to it while he was throwing shot after shot into both arms um, with my mom, you know, sitting there. And, uh, you know, I got through that just fine. These are the two Dick Tracy figures that I picked up in the summer of 1990 before we moved to England just a few weeks later. Uh, I was trying to find the blank, but we didn't know that he had been held back from release, or she, as the case may be, because Disney didn't want to spoil the movie prematurely, but the blank was on all the card backs. So when we went into Toys R Us the first time, we were able to walk away with a few figures, and I picked up Dick Tracy and The Brow. I got a job at Toys R Us. This is my original shirt and tag. And uh, I worked there uh, through my senior year of high school and then two subsequent Christmas seasons coming back from college for the holidays. And I remember all of the frenzy around the Star Wars Special Edition. I remember all of the chaos around the popular Christmas toys. I was there for the Tickle Me Elmo. I was there for the Buzz Lightyear. I heard horror stories from my fellow employees from a few years before I was there about the Power Rangers Christmas. It was an experience. Toys R Us was the one that, I mean, it, it was the gold standard. And it had a great impact on a lot of kids. I personally have many fond memories of Toys R Us. It was the go-to place. We had Hills, Ames, Walmart, places like that. But they all kind of had the same stuff. But Toys R Us was special. Toys R Us had the things you couldn't find anywhere else. It was a place made with children in mind. Obviously, you know, the parents are the ones buying the toys, but when your parents dragged you into a JCPenney's or they dragged you into a Sears or they dragged you into an Elder Beerman, you were always dragging your feet. You didn't want to be there because there was nothing for you. But when you went to Toys R Us, the whole store felt like it was for you. And in a way, it was. That's where I found my Gundam model kits as a kid. That's where I found my Irwin Dragon Ball Z figures. That's where I found you know, Waterworld. I found so many toys. I have so many memories of going to Toys R Us. That was the place I could find that one toy, like Storm Shadow. This Storm Shadow is not my childhood one, but it was my Storm Shadow as a kid. I think it was 1998 or 99 when I got him. I had been looking for a figure like him for years. Ever since I got the Hall of Fame Storm Shadow, I wanted one that I could play with my regular G.I. Joes. And I remember I'd gotten him, I'd gotten an update 
to the Night Landing or the G.I. Joe version thereof. There were a lot of kind of Toys R Us exclusive G.I. Joe toys, it seems. In the final remaining days of Toys R Us being open, unfortunately, I was not in country. I made it back just in time for the local Toys R Us to where I was at to close. Uh, my final purchase were two Nerf guns. These are the two. It wasn't that I was a huge fan of Nerf. It wasn't that I'm a Nerf aficionado. It's that there wasn't much left. It was a devastating and kind of heartbreaking experience to walk through something so large as Toys R Us and to see almost nothing on the shelf. And so here, at the end of all things, or at least this video anyway, I want to thank you all for watching and experiencing some of these memories from us at Iconicon. And we will always be Toys R Us kids.